Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. The Feast of the Apostles is a very special time for the Church, and is a very special time for us personally, because we get to contemplate on the lives of our fathers, St. Peter and St. Paul. And because they are intrinsically connected by their feast day, and because we connect them, we always think of Peter and Paul. It even becomes something that people say, like it rolls off their tongue, not just Christians, but all over the world. People know Peter and Paul together. And what's amazing about that is that they were together, but two different persons, two very different persons. And what brought them together was the Spirit of Christ. So I would say that they are two different people, two different personalities, two different backgrounds, but one Spirit. And it's interesting to see their lives before the entrance of Christ into their lives and their lives after and how that affected them. And it's something that can remind us of the power that we have within us. So, for instance, St. Peter was born in Bethsaida and lived in Bethsaida and he was a fisherman. A fisherman back then wasn't a very glamorous job just like it probably isn't now. Whereas Paul on the other hand was born in a city called Tarsus. It's in Asia Minor in what's like present day Turkey. And Tarsus at the time was a city that was a Roman free city. So he was a Roman citizen, and a Roman citizen brought with him certain privileges that other non-Roman citizens did not have. The book of Acts refers to that when he mentions to the centurion that he's a Roman citizen after he gets captured in Jerusalem. And one of the benefits of being a Roman citizen is that he, was, he had the rights of a trial. He had the right of due process that we call now. St. Peter wouldn't have had that right. St. Peter also probably wasn't as educated because of his line of work. What they learned, they learned from their fathers. And since his father was a fisherman, he too became a fisherman. There was no need to learn anything else other than the books and the traditions of the Jewish faith. Paul, on the other hand, was well-learned and well-versed. He was a Pharisee, the son of a Pharisee. And therefore, he also was probably granted an education that was better or more in-depth than what St. Peter received in his youth. Paul was also well-known among his peers and well-known among the community, whereas Peter before Christ was just another regular fisherman known to maybe James and John, the sons of Zebedee, but not well-known throughout the country or well-known throughout his people. He was just a regular person. So you can see from the very beginning that Peter and Paul came from different aspects, came from different roots, and came as different people. Uh, Peter, we know from what we've read in the Gospels, was someone that was very zealous and faithful, but simple. And so the Lord loved him, and he loved the Lord very much. And he was zealous and faithful to his Lord. Perhaps sometimes more zealous than his even faith could withstand, but he was so faithful that he could not hide the emotions in his voice when he would speak to the Lord. And the Lord loved Peter, and he became almost uh, someone that the other disciples looked up to, probably just because of his age and because of his closeness to Christ. St. Paul, on the other hand, did not know Christ until after his death, although History tells us that he was born a couple of years before Christ, so nearly the same age, so therefore lived during the time of Christ, but did not know Christ personally. And of course, the big difference between the two is that Peter followed in the footsteps of Christ, and St. Paul didn't. He actually fought against the church. And fighting against the church, he showed his also zealousness towards his faith, and that he was willing to do whatever Caiaphas told him. At the time of his conversion, of course, what they call on the road, of, road to Damascus, he had with him letters that would have 
caused great grief to the Christians. And he was planning on executing those, uh, those letters to the full force of the law. After the reception of the Holy Spirit by Peter, he became changed. Before the Holy Spirit, he was at some point denying Christ because of fear that was inside of him. After the Holy Spirit, he stood up in the midst of his peers to hundreds and was able to speak to them with full voice, without fear and with full courage. St. Paul, of course, before he received the Holy Spirit, was a different person and was brought down very low to the point that he could not even see. So that the Lord could explain to him that before you were blind and now you're going to see. When the like scales were removed from his eyes, he became also newborn, a new birth, a new person, a different person. And they, although also different in their apostleship, different in their styles, different in their thoughts about early Christianity sometimes, they were both so encouraged by the Holy Spirit so that they feared no one, they feared nothing, they entered into any place. Paul, because of his Roman citizenship and because he was a little bit more well-traveled, went towards the Gentiles. Peter, St. Peter, shepherded the Jews that were in the diaspora around Jerusalem. And like when we look at them, we see this change that happened within them. And we see that they were willing to spread the gospel with all their heart and all their soul. Like I said, without fear or without turning back. Especially because we saw that they had fears. And we saw that they were different. As we always say during this time of year, we too have this same grace within us. We too have the same measure of the Holy Spirit within us. But St. Peter and St. Paul nurtured it. One of the great stories about both of them, we mentioned it also during the Fraction of the Apostles, is that when St. Peter used to walk the streets, they used to line the sick and the demon-possessed just so the shadow of St. Peter could cover over them and they would be healed. And St. Paul, the same, what they would do is they would take just handkerchiefs or clothes, or garments, or anything that he had, they would take, and they would take those things and heal the sick with them. So that we learn something very special from this, is that not just is our mind sanctified by the Holy Spirit, or our body sanctified by the Holy Spirit, but where we live, where we walk, what we wear, what we eat, what we see, what we do, what we say. What we get tricked by sometimes is that we think that the Holy Spirit is something that's within us, and so we're different than the Holy Spirit that's within us. Sometimes we too, I have fallen into this, is that we think that if we enter the church or if we enter a holy place, then it's worthy of us being sanctified. Whereas if we're out in public or within other people, then it doesn't matter as much to be sanctified or holy in the things that we do and that we say. We all sometimes fall into this trap where we think, I would never say that inside of church, or I would never say that in front of so-and-so. But we're willing to sometimes say those things outside of church or in front of the worldly people. As if all of a sudden, our sanctification is predicated on the place where we stand. But that's not the case. We sanctify everything that we do. So if we speak, we should sanctify our speech so that the things that come out of our mouth are sanctified so that we can give glory to the Holy Spirit that's within us. When we do actions, we should do actions as if the Holy Spirit is doing them, so that we'd be almost embarrassed to do something if the Holy Spirit wouldn't be worthy of doing such a thing. If handkerchiefs and clothes can be sanctified by the person, then how much more than can our speech or what we see or what we touch or what we say? Since we also have this same duty also to spread the gospel, we can at the very least, if not the kind of people that would be willing to go out and spread it and speak to everybody about the gospel, we can spread the gospel in a different way. And it's the same way as that I just spoke of, is that if our voices 
and our eyes and our thoughts and our actions are sanctified by the Holy Spirit and confirmed and established by the Gospels that we've read, then everything that we do becomes a Gospel or becomes sort of an example for others and a picture of Christ. Inside we're looking at uh, an icon that we're going to be passing out of St. Peter and St. Paul. And we obviously don't know exactly what they look like, but usually St. Paul is, is standing and he's bald and St. Peter usually has hair and a beard. But what's more important is not what the outwardly look was. And what's more important than how they lived their life before Christ, what's more important than that is what happened after Christ. And like I said in the beginning, they became one body and one spirit like Christ. What happens with us in a place like this is that we sometimes don't know our roles, especially our roles as someone that's supposed to be preaching the gospel of Christ. But it becomes very easy when you think about it because we have one person to look towards, one person to emulate. And we can see that that emulation can turn our lives around. St. Peter and St. Paul both became different people after Christ. And we too, because we have Christ within us, can become different people and better people, even better than we are now. If we're good, that's great. We can still be better. If we're not so good, that's fine too. We can be better and great also. May the Lord always give us this spirit of the gospel and this image of Christ that's within us so that we can look at St. Peter and St. Paul and see that even though they came from different places, they ended up at the same place, which is in Christ. And glory be to God for 